Did you know that glass blowing has been around for more than 3,000 years? Well, one thing's never changed about it, though. It still takes talent to do it right. Recently, Ken Wilshire met a professional glass blower who just loves to share his talent. His art degree is in ceramics and pottery. I just wanted to create things, um, new and unique things in the world, and, um, and, and, and use my hands doing it. But his passion is in working with white hot molten glass. Glass was just, just it spoke to me a lot clearer than the pottery did. So when Chattanooga glass blower Chris Mosey embarked upon his career as what he calls an object maker, it was with smoke, fire, and a burning desire to create. The process of the, the, the making uh, of making glass is what really intrigued me. I mean, it's just the smoke, it's 2,000 degrees, there's smoke, there's fire. It's all this visceral energy behind it when you're making it. It's, it's, it's a, it, largely a team endeavor, mostly. You have to have a lot of people to help you do it, and it's, it's, a, lot of, it's a lot of collaborative uh, energy going together to make one piece. And that's what really drove me to it. It was just like you just got to communicate with, like, I don't know, like, like your tribe or whatever. That's what really... Um, interest me. Even his studio is called Ignis Glass, which implies heat and fire. Chris says if you can overcome all the hazards of the art, glass blowing is relatively simple. No, the, the basic process of glass blowing just starts out with uh, you have a long tube called a blowpipe and then you have a furnace. That furnace contains all the molten glass. You retrieve the glass out of the furnace with a blowpipe, basically how you would take honey out of a honey pot. You apply color to that, that blob of glass and you uh, inject air into it with your mouth and you just blow it into a shape that, that whatever you're making, either a tumbler or a bowl or um, a Christmas ornament or a candle holder. It's, it's, it's very difficult to articulate uh, glass blowing. You really need to see it to, to really fully understand it. To Chris, it's the glass blowing process that he truly loves. His exquisite functional and sculptural works are simply the results. I make everything from functional, uh, functional work to, to sculptural work. Uh, I, I, enjoy, um, I enjoy making works that, that people just enjoy just looking at and, and observing to pieces that um, enrich their, their daily functioning lives, like where you would put your fruit, to uh, a drinking glass, to uh, candle holders, to, to lamps. Just being able to communicate with people on that level, uh, a nonverbal communication is, 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 has always been a uh, fascination of what art does to people. It's believed glass blowing was invented by the Phoenicians around 50 BC, but natural glass has been around since the beginning of time. It's this ancient, unearthed look that Chris wants to achieve. I, mean, I don't really like glass as a material. It's, it's a little bit too flashy, a little bit too shiny. No, you don't really ever want to touch it. You don't want to interact with it. You just want to look at it. And it just never appealed to me. I, I mean, glassy stuff doesn't really appeal to me. Like, the more it invites your touch, like the more surfaces, the more texture a piece has, uh, that's when I really get interested in it. So a lot of my work speaks to that as well. And like so many of his predecessors, Chris isn't only an artist, but a teacher as well. And to allow others to experience this ancient art, Chris invites the community into his studio to try their hands at blowing glass. But it's the young folks who seem truly fascinated with what he does. A person will come in and they will, they will choose from a palette of colors. They'll choose that color and then we'll start the process. I'll take the glass out of the furnace with the pipe, I'll uh, apply the colors with them there, and then I actually give them the blowpipe and then they actually get to melt the glass in and get to feel what it's like to have that glass on the end of a stick and just have it how it moves and how it flows. Once all the colors melted in, we go back to the bench, the working area, and um, I attach a blow hose to the blowpipe and they just they inject their own air into this, the ornament and it inflates to eh, about four to five inches. When I see a child come in and they see that ornament blow up and their eyes get huge, they just are so amazed at the material and the parents are smiling and they're all happy. So I get to kind of like live through them of like how I felt when I first saw glass. So it's always, it's great. Cause it's like I get to see that every day. And when it's too hot out in the studio, Chris comes inside and does paintings like these that even mimic glass. When it gets too hot, I, 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 um, I start painting. When I started making these, these, these paintings, I wanted glass to be in there in some way, or the, at least the idea of glass to be in these paintings. So since I couldn't really use the hot glass on there, I just decided to find uh, 
sort of a facsimile of glass, which the resin seemed to be pretty well suited for. Surprisingly, thousands of years ago, glass was as precious as gold. And while this certainly has changed, it hasn't devalued the art of glass blowing nor Chris Mosey's passion for pursuing it.